My name is Amanda Rama, and I've come all the way down to St. Petersburg, Florida to interview the great Phil Trainer, musician extraordinaire. He has a new album out called Autumn Breeze, and we're going to sit down and talk to him about his inspiration and why he's so fabulous, like this hat. Tell us a little bit about Autumn Breeze. It's my third CD. It was inspired when I got, I had to replace my my keyboard one day. I sat down and started messing around with the different sounds that it has and I found this beautiful phasey Fender Rhodes, very retro 70s kind of. It brought back all of the music that when I was growing up, because I'm really old. <laughs> <laughs> I came up listening to Chuck Mangione and the Jeff Lorber Fusion and you know Bob James and, and just that sound just washed over me and I'm like, oh my goodness, I just, I have to start recording this. I had this big book of tunes that I had written from that era. In fact, all but one of the songs were written in the 80s. From the very first time I sat down and started to play and started to record, I kind of feel when you're onto something. And it was just one of those, oh, this is the next six months of my life. And that's exactly what it was. Do you have a favorite track? The sentimental favorite is actually a piece I didn't write. My late best friend, uh, Mikey, wrote it. And he passed away 10 years ago. And there was one piece of his that, that was always my favorite. And it was, it's called Alone. When he wrote it, it was called Alone With Myself. I inherited all the rights to all of his material when he died, which was a wonderful thing, because he's got this big book of stuff that I've just begun to explore, really. A particular album was, in, was very inspiring to the both of us, and it was Chuck Mangione's Live at the Hollywood Bowl. They were our musical heroes. You know, Chris Vidala plays sax and flute and everything. James Bradley Jr. on drums, Grant Geisman on guitar. Through some lightning strikes, through magic and, and divine intervention, I got Chris Fidala playing on the CD. Whom do you owe uh, the connection with Well, my, my Facebook, believe it or not. I was posting just a general hello to the, to the wall of the lead singer of the power show band I was in in college. And in behind me, and behind me comes an old friend of mine, Mary, Mary Sugar. Who I went to high school with. Phil, is this you? Yeah. Well, it's me. Hi, Mary. How you doing? And she said, well, I read this note of yours. These things that go around on Facebook, like 25 random things. Well, there's one that goes around in the musician community called Musician's Game of Tag. And it's name 10 albums that inspired you most and why. Well, my number one was Man Joe Live at the Hollywood Bowl. And Mary said, your favorite is the same as mine. Yeah. Did you know Chris Fidel is a friend of mine? Boing! Small world. Yeah, you know. Two emails later, I'm negotiating with him to play on That's my amazing. CD. So, why is Live at the Hollywood Bowl such a? Why is it your number one? It is the arranging sensibility. It's really more melodic, more rich chordally, more rich harmonically. The Hollywood Bowl gig was him and his quartet and the LA Philharmonic. Bone chillingly beautiful string arrangement. That you want to turn all the way oh, up. Oh yeah, just yeah. just oh, and you're floating around. It had shaped me so much, you know. I, wrote these tunes with it in mind and now all of a sudden I'm just connected with somebody who was on that record. You said this is going to be the next six months of my life. Is that usually how long it takes you to put together an album or historically? <laughs> no, this has been by far the shortest. Really? Yeah, because it was so intense and so all-consuming. Oh my god, this is every waking moment until it's done. I can't why are you doing this? Because I can't not. The reason that this is happening at all is because Mikey died. Right. And it occurred to me, I better use these gifts while they're mine to use. You know, my family has missed me. <laughs> when the muse visits, you listen. You stop, you listen to her when she's here. I have lost some of the greatest material I've ever written because she came to visit at 3.30 in the morning and I didn't get out of bed and put it down. Tell me about your process. Well, it's different every time. I don't write a tune and then take it to my band to play. Right. I'm playing everything. I write backwards. Most people, they get a melody in their head. And then they harmonize that melody. Well, I don't really think that way because my primary instruments are drums and bass. I'm the guy who backs up the other guys. The things that come to me first are rhythm patterns, chord progressions harmonization. I kind of actually do most of the arrangement in my head first before it ever hits, you know, any sort of written or recorded form. And then I got to fight with a melody. That part doesn't come natural. I'll go up and play bass or play drums with anybody and hang with them because I'll just sit back in the pocket and support them and that's what they need. Oddly enough, I get more joy out of that, of being the guy, okay, Mr. Guitarist, I'll be here to catch you when you land then, you know, look at me, you know, right. don't look at me. <laughs> <laughs> I hire out my solos, I'll bring people in that I know have a sound, have the, the sound that's in here, okay, who do I know that does that, 
and I bring them in and I have them do it. And it's an eclectic mix of people. Chris Vidala, and I've also got um, Pete Huttlinger. He was John Denver's guitarist from 1994 till, wow. till John Denver died. He tours with Leanne Rimes now. He's, uh, he was the 2000 World Fingerstyle Guitar Champion. And I met him at the, the Swannanoa Gathering, a guitar camp I go to every year. Who's Jimmy? Jimmy is my, is my best mate. His name's Jimmy Dacey, and he plays shred, you know, heavy metal guitar. He's a disciple of George Lynch and, you know, guys like that. He's not a theory guy. He just does it, you know, it just comes out of here and it's in his fingers. When I first uh, listened to the album, it made me feel a little frisky. <gasps> it oh, is a good, very sexy CD. It's I got that, like, hey, what's going on? People say, describe it in one sentence, I, and I say to them, it's get in the jacuzzi with somebody really cute in music. <laughs> love and sex are connected, and it's passionate. You know, it's love. The cover work of Autumn Breeze oh, is gorgeous. And it's a story in itself. So Bonnie and I are casting around looking for anything. So she finds on Google, we're just kind of searching colors and searching the word Autumn. And there was this little image. Whoa, look! And I, God, this is amazing. It's perfect. So I go in and I find out what it is, and it's this piece of art. It is an artist in Glasgow, Scotland of all places, named Matt Reed. Well, let's ask him what's the worst he can do is say no, right? Anyway, end of August is when I'm slated to go to work with Chris Vidala. I fly up to Baltimore to do that. The morning of the session, bing, got an email from Matt Reed in Scotland. I'd ask, can I license this image from you? And he writes back, yeah, I'll, I'll happily license this to you. And as far as compensation, well, you know, put my name in the credits and maybe send me one or two of the CDs, that should do it. And I heard back from him pretty recently that it has inspired him to pick his paintbrush back up. My music inspired him to pick his paintbrush. I was blown That's away amazing. by that. Yeah. So there's this reciprocity in this whole karma little camp going on. And it's just been these little little flashes of lightning through this whole process. You know, I mean, I have a beautiful daughter that I just see, you know, whether a song I wrote for her is, is, is on here. I wrote that song for her while Bonnie was pregnant with her. But we're playing it for her. You know, put the headphones around. I wanted it to be the very first music she heard in this world. So I had a boombox in the delivery room. And she comes out and, you know, they do the whole, and I had to go cut the cord and the whole, wah, wah, she was shrieking out. And they give her to me and she's, wah, 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 and I walked over the boombox and I hit the button on the song count. And, and she froze. And she just sat there. Like, Listen to the whole song. It was the coolest thing ever. Tell everyone where they can find your music and how they can get turned on to what you do. Well, it's the easiest place is to go to my website, philtrainer.com. <laughs> I need to do some like asides and be funny, right? You're bald and you've got glasses on. We need to talk about payment. Oh, yeah. Well, this is an exactly what I had in mind, you know. Oh, oh. You know, I thought this was going to be fun. Things you have to go through to sell a little music. Look, I only stock a few things, so you're just gonna have to deal, okay? Okay, princess. Okay. Hush. <gasps> What's up in the house? Wearing a crazy visor like a little old lady on the golf course. You think I could bust you up? But <laughs> Get them in the hot tub and